All right, we're looking at uh, GCO2. Uh, this video will cover uh, both uh, worksheets three and four. And uh, we're looking at, uh, still looking at transformations, kind of extending uh, the discussion that we had before on transformations a little bit. So now we're talking about um, special types of transformations. But again, first of all, let me just go back to what a transformation is. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. So we talked about what mappings are and how one-to-one -one is a very important characteristic. And it's one that we care a lot about in geometry because we want to start with some quadrilateral. And when we're done, we want a quadrilateral. Even though maybe it's changed its dimensions or size or characteristics, this is still a transformation because I'm starting with four points and I end with four points or four vertices. Or if I had a triangle, I want to end up with some sort of a triangle. Again, three to three, four to four, a mapping. Now isometric is a much more specific type of transformation. And we even like this one better because uh, when we do an isometric transformation, it preserves a number of things. It preserves distances. Now what I mean by that is that um, when we move the shape using an isometric transformation, the distances of the original vertices will all be the same. They're all going to be the exact same distance away. It also preserves angle measures. So angles will maintain their size and will be identical. It preserves parallelism, which means that if things were parallel before, things are still parallel. Well, basically, isometric is a code word for one you probably already know or are familiar with is congruent. Um, really, that's what it means to be isometric, is it produces a congruent shape. So if we look uh, now at a couple of examples here, we see that um, we have a rotation, a translation, and a reflection. And when we look at the shape, the distances all match up, the angles all match up, so rotation seems to be isometric. Translations, we see that nice little slide there, and also we say, yes, that, uh, that would also be isometric. We see the reflection here and, and it, what it does to the shape of what we do notice that M and K and M and K and L and M and so on are all equal and the angles are the same. So these are all examples of isometric. So what would be some examples of non-isometric? Well, that might be this group here where we get a little sense of um, things like dilation. So is a dilation a type of isometric transformation? Our answer is no, of course it's not. It's getting bigger. Now there's some characteristics that maintain, but no, not all of them. This is sometimes called a stretch, where like one dimension is changed, and of course it's not. Uh, and again, another example of a stretch. This might be a good time now to kind of tell you what we mean by a stretch. Uh, a stretch is when a shape's dimensions are changed non-proportionally. So that could mean only one dimension got changed. It could mean both are getting changed, uh, but, but differently. Now a dilation is kind of like that. Um, notice this is a dilation look, this is a stretch look. A dilation is the same idea, but it will change proportionally. So a very similar definition. When a shape's dimensions are changed, you know what's going to come now, are changed proportionally. All right. Now let's take a look at what this might look like in some examples just quickly. Let's look at them. So this just says, um, here's our pre-image and our image, and uh, let's just take a look at it. So uh, which of these are isometric? Well, this definitely is not. It got smaller. 
This one seems to have a dimension issue. This one's not isometric. Um, this one is. This happens to be isometric, this little one. Looks like a rotation's taken place, but it's the only thing that's gone on. And then they ask us, what do we think went on here? Well, this looks the same shape, but smaller. That's a dilation. Looks proportional. This looks to have been stretched. And again, like I said, this looks like a, a nice rotation. Let's do one more like that. Uh, here's a little guy. Uh, let's take a look here. This looks to be good to go. Uh, this one's good for isometric and this one's not. Now, let's see. What would this be? This looks like a rotation. This one looks like a reflection. And this one looks like a stretch. All right, one last thing. I want to just show you how we can apply this into coordinates and using a coordinate rule. These are things that we've recently done a little bit with. And so uh, let's take a look at how this kind of question works. You're given a triangle, its points, and a coordinate rule, and you're asked to apply the coordinate rule. So this says negate all of the y values. So I'm going to leave x alone, uh, and I'm going to negate all of those other values. And then I'm going to plot this at uh, negative 1, 1, at 0, and negative 4, at 4, and 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. And uh, we create a new shape. Here is our A prime, our C prime, and our B prime. Now when we look back on the original, we can see that that was just simply, uh, well, it is isometric first, and we can see that it is a reflection that has taken place uh, in that coordinate rule. So it is isometric. Let's try one last one. And so uh, again here we, uh, we want to use the coordinate rule here. This time we leave x alone. So I'm going to leave x all alone. And it says double and negate. So double and negate. Uh, double and negate. Here we are. Let's quickly plot this at uh, a prime here. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here we get C prime. And then at uh, 1 and negative 6, we get B prime. Now we definitely see that the shape has changed. And uh, it seems that this dimension is the same, but the Y value has somehow changed. This would be known as a stretch. So finally, maybe just to quickly recap, we got these things called transformations one-to-one -one mappings. There's a little subgroup to that, a special subgroup called isometric. And we are now learning that we have a reflection in that group. We have a rotation in that group. We have a translation in that group. And we also learned that there are ones that are not isometric. And these ones uh, are, at least some of the ones we know so far, are dilate. Um, we know uh, also stretch, and uh, later we'll look at other ones, maybe distort uh, is another one, just a straight distortion, or maybe even another one called shearing we may look at. All right, great.